this happened last week. Okay, welcome to the uh, week three go-to session. So this is the third of four sessions that we'll have this month. Um, this one's mostly focused on what we're going to do this week, which is peer review. Peer review is sort of main activity for this week. As I mentioned in an earlier session, things start to slow down, kind of, in this course. We've moved pretty quickly, right? Week one, you had to choose a topic. You had to write an introduction. Uh, week two, you actually had to do research, write an essay. Um, now things sort of slow down. This week is focused on peer review, and then you have most pretty much all of week four just to work on your actual public service announcement and I'm going to get into that today as well we'll finally start talking about the final thing that you're going to create for this class by the way speaking of the essays that you just handed in um, I'm glad to see that most people handed them in um, I will just throw this caution out uh, real quickly so you're aware of it I'm going to be somewhat silent this week. Not silent in terms of, like, if you if you send me a message, I won't ignore it. Or if you call me in the office, I won't ignore it. But I'll be a little bit quiet on the discussion board, and that's, that's on purpose. Um, I'm grading through your essays right now, but I'm saving the comments that I've written and putting them aside because I'd actually like to get those back to you a little bit later in the week, like Thursday or Friday instead of trying to get things turned around in 72 hours as I usually do. And there's a reason for that. I don't want to disrupt the peer review process. For example, some of your essays that, uh, well, actually, I haven't gotten to the, uh, well, I'm, I have two groups of students with me tonight in two different courses. So um, if you're in Section 32, I might have already read your essay and written comments about it. Uh, but I just think it's a little bit disruptive to give the, you back those comments like immediately. It's exciting because then you think I'm the fastest grader in the world. Like, wow. He's already done grading my paper. But then there's the temptation that you might be so influenced by my remarks that you won't really listen to what your classmates say to you. Um, that probably isn't the case, but I just don't want that to happen. So I'll be a little bit silent. I'll, I'll, I'll wait a little bit to get your grades back until the later part of the week. You'll still get it before, you know, hopefully Thursday or Friday. So you'll, you'll still have plenty of time to read my comments, soak them in, and then spend all of week four creating your public service announcement. Um, but I will be also a, a bit silent on the board. I don't want to disrupt what people are saying back and forth to one another uh, by me sort of chiming in. I mean, I might make a few comments, but I'll, I'll try not to because my presence can sometimes affect things or people might parrot what I say. Um, but okay, let's talk about peer review. Since this is the big... Oh, actually, let me take this down for a second. Uh, since this is the big activity for the week. So m some of you may have noticed that there's this peer review discussion board activity. I'll just go into it because I don't think I've gone into this section's discussion board yet. And you can see some people have already posted their essays to the board. And so if you haven't done that yet, you need to do that, like immediately. Tonight would be nice. Tomorrow morning at the latest. This activity ends on Saturday, so if you post your essay even on Wednesday, that still gives people all Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and through midnight on Saturday to hopefully read your essay and respond. Uh, but as you can see, a number of people have already posted to the board here. Um, this is from section 31, so I don't know if we have people from this section with us tonight. Um, but you can see... Oh, look, someone's already started commenting. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, your essay that you handed in on Sunday, you just need to post it to the board. Okay? You can copy and paste it the way this person has done. Or you can just provide the link if you have it saved in some sort of cloud-based uh, place, like uh, Mr. Ariel, Ariel Levy has done here, right? There's a link to his document. Either way is fine, but it just needs to be there. Um, make sure that if you are including a link to some sort of cloud-based place where you have things saved, whether it's Dropbox or Google Docs or, you know, anything like that, make sure that it's working. Make sure that you have your share settings set correctly because... Sometimes it happens we click on your document and can't get to it. We get the permission denied error, so make sure that doesn't happen on your end. Uh, but just make sure that your, your essay is posted to the board. Uh, for the few of you who didn't hand in an essay, I'm not going to obviously call out people by name, but if you didn't, I encourage you, even though you know there's a zero late paper policy in this course, I still encourage you to post your work, even if you know the essay deadline has passed. Um, so you don't get sort of you don't get nailed you don't lose points for the peer review activity so if you can get your essay done post it to the board that's fine if you don't get an essay done that's kind of uh, that's kind of bad news but I'd still encourage you to join in the partici uh, and participate on the discussion board by responding to at least one person's essay so you're getting some credit for that 
Okay, so let's get away from the negative stuff, because mo- that doesn't apply to most of you. Uh, most of you handed in your essays. I was happy to see that. All of you pretty much are doing awesome with McGraw-Hill. I'm super thrilled about that. Ever since I've become proactive and really shouting at students to make sure that they do this, that it's easy, free points, and I think it's useful, the modules that you have to complete. Um, I'm happy every time I go to McGraw-Hill uh, on Monday morning to see who completed their work by Saturday night, and it's pretty much just awesome, because I just see green bars that go all the way across, saying 100%, so keep that up. Okay, so let me go back to my PowerPoint thingy, because I do want to talk about peer review. Uh, okay, there's the overview, right? We're going to talk about peer review. We'll get into what you're going to do for the final project in terms of creating those public service announcements, and then we'll leave some time for questions and answers. I have no idea why that slide is blank. <laughs> I think there's supposed to be a picture there. There are pictures there. Why aren't they appearing? The image cannot be displayed. Oh, I probably have too many things open. Uh, okay, let me see if I can close some tabs. Hopefully that will do something. I have like 10 million tabs open. Oh, this happened last week, right? And but by the way, if people hear me cutting in and out, please let me know. I know that was an issue last time. Someone who was in the room told me it might be my upgrade to Maverick that is causing all these problems. If I would have known that, I wouldn't have updated. Um, I'm going to try to close this and reopen it. Ah. Hang in there. Hang in there. I know where it is. Peer review PSA. Okay. Come on. Work. There we go. Okay, much better. Uh, so let's talk about peer review, okay? Um, most of you have participated in peer review sometime in the past, right? Think back to high school or if you've taken a college-level composition class. Have you guys participated in peer review before? Usually it's the teacher putting you into groups and you exchange drafts or exchange papers and either you answer a set of questions or you just read the paper and comments as you go through it. Okay, Dustin has. I'm guessing other people have as well. I think peer review is pretty awesome. The only concern I have when it's done in the classroom is that some people take the task very, very seriously and others don't. And to a certain degree, I get it. It's not the most fun activity to do in class, <laughs> sit there and read another person's paper in real time and respond to it, which is why I like the online version of peer review. This way, if you sit down to read someone's paper, let's say tomorrow, and I don't know, you're just not in a good mood, or you need to take a walk away from the essay to think about it, or you're so hungry that you just need to go out and get a burrito. Like, you can come back to the peer review uh, activity that day or another day and complete it. So you don't have to get it right all at once. Um, so I, that's something that I like. Because I do think peer review can be incredibly valuable. Um, and since you have until Saturday to complete this, and you only have to look at at least one person's essay, um, there's there's really not any excuse not to do a thoughtful, in-depth job. Okay, but let's talk about peer review in the bigger sense. And by that I mean, like, what sort of help do you expect from your classmates? Let's begin with stuff that you typically don't like. And think back to your previous peer review experience, or just, you know, intuitively think about what sort of feedback you would not think is terribly helpful. For example, what sort of feedback would you could you get from classmates that isn't terribly helpful? You can go ahead and answer in the chat or you can raise your hand and speak out loud. But what sort of feedback makes you look like the woman in this picture, right, with the classic face palm gesture? Just as a writer, like what sort of frustrates you? Dustin says, pure negativity? Okay. <clears throat> I don't see that too, too often. Uh, but yeah, there are some people, I wouldn't say that they're pure negative, but they'll only concentrate on negatives and not point out anything positive. And maybe they think they're working from a perspective of sort of tough love, which I sort of get, and some people do appreciate that, just directness and frankness. But sometimes it can go too far. Um, you know, I don't know, or the person doing the peer review is, is angry. <laughs> But yeah, pure negativity isn't good. Someone else said, no feedback. I'm not sure what no feedback means. If that literally means that someone doesn't do anything, yeah, okay, that's problematic. I wonder if you mean by no feedback, John, when someone just doesn't give you very useful feedback. Like they say, oh, great job, or 
Uh, I would give this an A if I were the instructor, or looks good to me, <laughs> right? Or they make some generic things like, oh, I know some proofreading errors, or, or right, it's it's feedback, but it's kind of no feedback. It's it's sort of just uh, not terribly helpful. Rochelle says grammar. I'm not sure what that means. If that means lack of grammar, or if, if someone just focuses on grammar and doesn't really focus on like the uh, more important stuff that may be going on. Uh, Stephen said what basically what I said, right? Uh, saying it's not good or it's good without giving specifics. Okay, great. Uh, Christopher says bad proofreading, miswording. I'm not sure if that's from the writer's perspective or if uh, I, I don't know if that means that pro that someone's focusing too much on proofreading or someone's just doing a bad wor job of proofreading. Uh, Dust actually Dustin makes a good point. When their feedback is unrelated, it feels like they didn't read or put any effort to it. Uh, yeah, good. And maybe I could have stressed this more with the week one discussion because I did sort of comment to a few people that remember week one you wrote an introduction and you also addressed some other points uh, when you posted to the board. And I noticed some people, and I'm not saying they were doing like that they were malicious or they were trying to avoid the assignment. Um, and I could have given probably more guidance. I'll start doing that next month. But I notice a lot of people, like, they get really caught up in the topic itself, but not the actual content of what's on the page. In other words, if someone's writing about, I don't know, streaming music, like, the person will get really caught up and talk about streaming music, which is awesome, and I don't mind if, 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 if some of the feedback touches on that a little bit, but ultimately that's not kind of the job, to get into a discussion about the topic itself. Uh... Okay, good. I think people kind of hit on the main ones here, right? So feedback that's either just too general and not specific, feedback that's overly negative, feedback that's maybe too focused on grammar or, or smaller stuff when maybe there are bigger things to work on, uh, people maybe not staying on topic, or as Christopher says, a uh, bad job of knowing what you are reading. Yeah, that's a good point, too. I don't know if people can make sense out of that, but I think what Christopher is saying is that when the person isn't really keyed into the reading, I try to be the most generous reader I can, meaning like I try to figure out what it is the writer wants to say and give feedback based on what the writer says. Even at this stage in week three, there are times where, okay, I still am not 100% convinced with the topic, but nobody wants to hear that in week three, right? The course is coming to a close, so I give the best advice possible to help that person still create the best public service announcement he or she can. Um, or just, you know, uh, you don't have to be super familiar with the person's topic, but you at least have to read it thoughtfully and respond carefully. Um, some people get angry if they don't agree with the writer's position or they don't read it in the right mindset. Um, so all that, yeah, isn't terribly helpful. So what kind of feedback is helpful? Well, I won't ask people necessarily to answer in the chat because, uh, well, actually, Dustin kind of has. I was going to say, it's, it's sort of the complete opposite of everything we've listed. Dustin says when it's constructive and offers ideas for improvement. Yeah, that's like the main thing, right? So if we point out that something's working well, we don't just say, oh, it looks awesome. If we, you really think that it's awesome, specifically mention like what's working well. Is the introduction powerful? Were you uh, persuaded by a particular piece of a uh, uh, statistic or a quotation or an example, um, right? And also, if there are suggestions for improvement, don't just say paragraph three confused me. Try to explain what made you possibly confused in paragraph three. Um, so yeah, the idea is to be constructive and offer ideas for improvement, as Dustin says. And I'll actually echo that and go one step further. Don't be afraid to offer ideas, because something else happens. Uh, I d again, I don't think that people sometimes just are super positive because they're trying to avoid the assignment requirements. I actually think people sometimes are just nervous about making suggestions. Nobody wants to look like that mean guy or mean gal. Somehow we... I don't know, we tighten up, we sort of clam up when we have to give e we'll give people constructive feedback. Um, and my advice is, don't be shy. I mean, you know, be polite with your wording, but give people suggestions. Um, we're all big, go big boys and girls, and we can decide. My number one piece of advice always when getting feedback is sort through your feedback, decide what makes sense, what doesn't, ignore the stuff that doesn't make sense, and use the stuff that does, okay? So there's no harm in putting your ideas out there. Um, again, we can decide for ourselves whether it's whether it's spot on or whether it feels off to us. 
Okay, so yeah, feedback that is helpful is kind of the exact opposite of what we just said. Um, it's specific. It takes some time to point out what's working well. Um, it focuses not just on nitpicky stuff, but big picture stuff. Um, and actually, that kind of leads into my next slide, which may or may not be a quiz question. Okay, so it is a quiz question. Uh, the quiz questions will appear at the end of the session. I like to think of feedback as falling into two general categories. On the left here, we have higher order concerns. This is like big picture stuff. So thesis, content, organization. <clears throat> okay. Lower order concerns is the smaller stuff, often at the sentence level. Grammar, sense and structure, proofreading, style. For your feedback in this peer review, I'm going to say you should be spending most of your time over here. And there are two reasons for this. One, because if there are issues in terms of thesis, which for the PSA is really just your message, who it's trying to reach, and what you want that specific audience to do. Content, so the stuff that you mention in your essay to sort of, um, you know, define the issue thoroughly and then present, hopefully somewhat carefully, what you want a specific audience to do. And organization, so how it's put together in terms of arrangement. Like if there are problems at this level, the writer probably needs to hear that. So if you don't see a clear PSA message, the writer probably, yeah, needs some feedback about that. If their content seems underwhelming or if it seems like it needs more substance or you just weren't persuaded, you know, try to be specific in where you felt that. But like uh, I said, again, the student sort of needs to hear this. Um, there's a second reason why it's important to stay over here, though. This is the only essay you're writing this month. Okay, you do a lot of sneaky writing. Um, you post to discussion boards, you write introductions, you give each other feedback. Yes, you've written an essay. Um, you're, we'll talk about the PSA in just a second, but you'll, have to, you'll probably do some planning, which takes the form of writing in order to create that. Uh, but the actual true, true essay, we're done with that. You handed it in on Sunday and we move on. This isn't like a, a typical English class where you work on a draft, hand it in, get feedback, and revise. Um, here, the essay assignment is done. So, although grammar, sentence structure, proofreading will play a role in your actual PSA, you obviously don't want to have a PSA that has misspellings and, and things like that in it, but it's, it's not an essay, okay? So, really, we need, we need advice over here. Higher order concerns, more than the lower order concerns. Um, it would, be, yeah, if we were revising the essay, this stuff would still be of less importance, but we we could pay more attention to it. I'm not saying you can't comment on this stuff at all, but it should not probably be the main focus of your feedback during peer review. Uh, Rochelle says, "Oh, actually, that's a great question because I always forget to mention this <laughs> every month. Uh, what if you don't receive a, f a feedback from a classmate?" I need to fix the assignment sheet, so I make this clear. So hopefully all the people who watch this go-to session, because you have to watch the session and take a quiz over it, uh, make sure you target somebody who has not received feedback on the discussion board, okay? Because what happens is whoever's post appears at the top, and it keeps moving, so whoever posted first is at the top, but they'll eventually get pushed to the bottom. Um, what happens is whoever's on the top for the day gets like six, seven responses, uh, and then other people get none. So spread the wealth, okay? Find someone whose essay has not been responded to and respond to that one. Uh, John says, how do we know whose essay to review? Yeah, John, maybe I should come up with a better system, like tell everybody, I don't know, once you post to the board, look at the person in front of you and respond to that. But right now I'm just asking you to find someone's essay who has not received a response and just respond to it. So, John, if you respond to someone's essay that doesn't close the door on the possibility of other people responding to it but hopefully it sends a message okay someone else needs to go find someone else's essay to respond to because there have been issues where most people get responses but there's always a handful who don't so hopefully this month will be a little bit better than that but the, oh, yeah hopefully everybody gets gets feedback okay moving on oh real quick some some feedback tips i've kind of mentioned these in passing uh, feedback number one, tip number one, and by the way, I have three feedback tips to give. These might be, <laughs> I don't know why I say might be when it's pretty clear <laughs> what I'm hinting at. They might be quiz question material. So feedback tip number one is to be positive, okay? Uh, try to avoid that pure negativity that Dustin mentioned. Try to point out something that's working well. 
Um, again, people aren't malicious. I don't think people are trying to not be positive. I have to remind myself of this. I try to always read through comments after I've written them to make sure that my that I'm saying things the way I want to say. Because sometimes I can jump right into sort of feedback mode, like this isn't working well or this needs improvement. And so I, I try I try to point out kind of what's working well. Uh, so be positive. Second tip, we've already covered this, right? Be specific, not general. Uh, be specific always, whether it's something that's working well or something that needs improvement. And number three. Uh, when offering criticism, uh, use softeners and qualifiers. Does everybody know what that means when I say use softeners and qualifiers? Yes. I don't have to explain that too much, right? It means wording things in a certain way. Um, you may not notice, but with your own work, I'm always saying things like, oh, perhaps you should consider, or I wonder if you could do this, or... I was a bit confused here, right? I'm using softeners. I'm not just saying things outright, like I was confused or you need to do this, right? We sort of soften what we want to say. That's why I have the the cute little pills here that spell out the word love, even though the control panel is blocking the E right now. There we go. Um, yeah, so be careful with the way that you, you say things. Right, Stephen, you might want to. <laughs> and it, it kind of goes against, in some ways, uh, you know, in English we value conciseness and only using the right words and not a single word extra, like we, we try to avoid filler. But filler has its purposes sometimes uh, when we need to sort of, sort of soften what we say. Oh, before I forget, let me bring up the assignment sheet, which I might have closed. Nope, it's there. Okay, make sure that you actually... Excuse me. Look at the peer review dis uh, assignment sheet. It tells you that you know your response to a classmate needs to be at least 200 words. There's a reflection. I haven't mentioned that yet, so I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Um, basically, the gist is you just have to find one of your classmates' drafts and write at least a 200-word response to that classmate. And if you're absolutely confused on what to put in your in your feedback, because maybe you know, you're, you're not purposely trying to be general. You're just not sure what to say. You have some questions you can use. <clears throat> All right, these guiding questions. Uh, what is the thesis, right? Do you see those different appeals we talked about in week one being used? Ethos, pathos, and logos. Is the appeal for action clear? What is the writer asking the audience to do? Uh, what did the writer do well? What suggestions do you have for the writer? Okay, so you can use these questions, or if you're terrific at giving responses, you don't necessarily have to use these. But if you, yeah, if you need some help, just you know follow these questions and try to ask, answer them as specifically as possible. Once you do get feedback, I want you to also write back or respond to the writer um, and write. It's kind of kind of conflicting here. It says 250 words here. It says 200 words over here. I really don't do word counts unless something looks ridiculously short. So as long as it's in that 200-word ballpark, you're fine. But write a response to whoever wrote you feedback, okay? And respond to the peer review you just received, um, okay? It's specifically, most people address, like, given the feedback they've just received, um, how will they be able to use that? Or how was it helpful, okay? Um, and it also just shows me that you did, in fact, read uh, the responses that you got from at least one other classmate, okay? And if you don't get a response from a classmate, you, you'll just respond to the feedback that you get from me, okay? You'll sort of, either on the board or you can send me a message through the FSO system, write a kind of 200-word reflection based on my feedback to you. Um, but hopefully everybody gets a response from at least one other classmate. Okay, I'm going to close this because we need to close as many tabs as possible, it looks like. Oh, I guess all the quiz questions aren't at the end. I forget which ones I have them all at the end and which ones I have them scattered throughout. Okay, so here's quiz question number one. Uh, I just explained what high order concerns versus low order concerns are. So what do those terms mean? And then what were those three tips I just listed for giving feedback? So a two-part question there. What are high-order concerns versus low-order concerns? And what are those three tips for giving feedback? Oh, I just spilled coffee over myself. I have a drinking problem. Okay. 
Let's keep moving. No, it's not hot. It's, it's not. It's just trying to guzzle it in between things. Okay, so let's talk about your final project. Finally, we get to talk about the big thing that we're working on this month. So, yay. Um, you need to create a public service announcement. Um, a quick reminder, the public service announcements are all around us. So here's an example of a billboard. Right? It has a specific message. Hug, don't slug. It's about domestic violence. And it encourages what you can do right to call this number it's a little bit more minimal and simplified than what you're doing for this class but in essence there's a public service announcement um let me see if i can bring it up real quickly but other examples of public service announcements that you see from time to time include oops nope i want that one still let me see if i I had this up before, but I had to close it because using too much memory. But like in magazines or online, you'll see sort of like print ads, and there are a couple cool ones here. Let me see if I can blow this guy up. Like this one here. Um, by the way, you're not going to be creating print ads, but I just want to give examples of real-world PSAs. Um, these are actually kind of graphic design oriented public service announcements that don't use very much language because in graphic design image is often more powerful not always but it's often more powerful way to get to get a message across so even if you ignore the text up here which I'm not sure you can read but it says every 60 seconds a species dies out but like even without that minimal language like the image here says so much because we know just by looking at it we know it has something to do with an animal we know it has something to do with time running out, right? Because the animal is being crushed by the hands of this clock. Um, so it, this is really impressive. By the way, a team of graphic design professionals come up with this sort of brilliant concept and execution. Um, because just even without the language, like the image by itself says so much. Um, but yeah, we know it has something to do with animal time running out. And then when we, we read the words, um, we understand what the message is. But notice, like, all those things I talked about in week one are going on here. Ethos is working overtime, right? Emotionally, it's not very pleasant to look at this image. Um, Logos is working. It's working minimally, but it is there. We get a fact. Every 60 seconds, a species dies out. And I would I even argue that pathos is kind of being used because uh, you see that there's this little symbol here for bund. And if you look up bund, you, you'll find out that they sort of work in this area. Um, so they're sort of a trusted source. Um, we know that there's some credibility here because the organization putting out this message um, works in this area. And real quickly, here's another powerful one. By the way, these are all great. Uh, here's one for smoking. I don't know if you can read the words, but it reads, Cigarettes Smoke People. Right, so a clever reversal on a phrase. We usually talk about people smoking cigarettes, but here it's cigarette smoking people. And because we always have a couple international students in the class every month, if you're not familiar, smoke is kind of an informal colloquial word that also means to eliminate or to destroy. So there's a reversal there. But it's the image, again, that's working more powerfully than anything else. Uh, because as we can see, people are literally being smoked. Um, so we don't even need to see the words, and we already know what the message of this uh, graphic design-oriented public service announcement is all about. Again, this is the kind of stuff that is put together by experts, a team of people who not only work on crafting such a delicate image, but also coming up with such a unique concept. Uh, but just a reminder that we're surrounded by PSAs every day, and they, use, they, they do have sort of the things we talked about, ethos, pathos, and logos all working together. Here, Logos isn't working maybe as powerfully because there are no facts or no statistics, uh, but the other two elements are. Okay, so what are you going to do this month in terms of a public service announcement? Basically, you have a couple different options. You have about five different options. I've only fit four onto this slide, but basically there's an option to create a short song or jingle that delivers your public service announcement message to record a piece of audio so we're we're talking about something that's more like a podcast um, to create a short comic or a short film or video um, has everybody here had a chance to look at the final project options PDF sheet I feel like I just crammed a lot of words there 
final project options PDF sheet. If not, I have it right here. Okay, the, this is, you can find this document under, I think it's the week three overview. Yeah. Right, so the week three overview, this is an attached document. If you haven't looked through it, I mean, you're seeing it now, but look through it on your own as well. Because here it lists all the different options. You can create a short video or film, which should be between one to three minutes. Um, and I don't, I don't know wh why this happens. Most 99% of the students sort of get this, but just in case there are a few people who are confused, you're working on the topic you've been working on all month, okay? So you're not going to do something on cigarette smoking or uh, animal species dying out. Whatever your topic is you wrote for the paper, you're working on for this final project. Uh, the video requires a written script to be handed in. Uh, and music, sound effects, and voiceover should, be, it should probably be used to enhance your video. Um, there are a couple reasons why I require the written script. First of all, it gives me some writing to evaluate. So back on that slide when I talked about lower order concerns like grammar, mechanics, sentence structure, all that, it's not that it doesn't play any important role. It's just that you're not writing a formal essay at this stage. But there still is writing to hand in and, and be evaluated. Also, the script gives me proof that you actually did some planning. Um, because a video PSA is not just you turning on your computer camera recording yourself for a minute and then stopping it when you run out of things to say um, okay it's 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 a planned piece um, and actually you should choose I'm gonna go through the options pretty quickly but I'll spend some time talk about each one but you should pick the format that you're most comfortable with um, so if you're choosing video film you should probably be you don't have to be an expert but you should be somewhat familiar with with how to put together um, a simple short video or film um, okay because there are times I'm, I'm not joking there have been people who literally just turn on their computer camera speak impromptu for a minute and then call that a video PSA no it requires more planning okay um, the audio PSA very very similar to the video PSA it's also one to three minutes uh, it also should have music or sound effects to enhance whatever is being recorded. The difference here, obviously, is that it's audio and not video. Um, I like to describe the audio PSA as, uh, again, uh, there, uh, I'd say students most often approach it from like a podcast perspective. So they either imitate maybe sort of a radio type show or a one-on-one -on -one interview with a guest where the PSA topic is, is discussed. Or they'll create a sort of like a commercial. I mean, commercials sell actual products. PSAs don't, but that's the best comparison I can make here. You know, the way that you might listen to a minute-long commercial on the radio, this would be a minute-long piece on, uh, that delivers your public service announcement message. Okay, audio PSA is good for people who don't have the most confident tech skills because it doesn't take that much experience or skill to be able to record a piece of audio. Um, and add at least basic sounds or music. Uh, okay, most of you have those 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 basic skills. Even if you don't, you can learn them pretty quickly. Um, your peers can help you out. I can pr I can help you out as well. There are a million YouTube tutorials that can that can help you with these these things. Um, it also requires a written script. Again, uh, there's it gives me some writing to evaluate. It also offers me proof that you're planning. Um, because an audio PSA is not you just uh, recording off the top of your head for a minute and then stopping it and calling it a PSA. It's also you not reading your essay out loud because that's not a PSA either. Um, all these options, by the way, require you to rethink your basic material. Again, the essay portion of this class is done with you're still working with the same basic material but now you have to do it in a completely different form and by doing it in a completely different form means you have to make completely different choices like if you're creating a short film or if you're creating an audio podcast um, you know you're going to have to choose what parts of your essay I shouldn't say essay but the best parts of your topic uh, should be stressed and how you're going to deliver that material um, so it requires a lot of different choices uh, anything else I wanted to say about that? I don't think so. Okay, you can also create a short comic. 
Uh, the comic doesn't require a script because any text that's going to be used will be included in the comic itself. Uh, the comic can be hand drawn or created using a comic generating program. Um, I don't really have a preference one way or the other. I will say that if you use a comic generator like Bitstrips or Powtoon or Go Animate, um, you can do amazing stuff with these tools, but you have to sort of really spend time with it and get under the hood of these programs. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to expi explain, but sometimes uh, comic-generated pieces can be a little bit generic if the, if the the student doesn't put a lot of effort into it. Like literally in every panel of the comic, there'll just be a figure standing there saying, Hi, today I want to talk to you about blah, blah, blah. And the next panel, the same person is just standing there and delivering another piece. No, you should really be fully exploiting what these tools can do for you. Uh, and if you have some skill in art, you can hand draw um, your comic. Uh, but that's a fun option. The game PSA, I'll talk to people who are, who are possibly interested in that individually. I only get a few game submissions. There are several months where I don't get any. Um, I finally got a good game PSA last month. Uh, the game PSA actually has specific challenges, so if you're interested in that format, speak to me because I have a lot of advice to give about what you sort of need to do well and what you need to sort of avoid. It's basically using creating... Uh, a short game that you actually sort of either play or watch uh, that delivers the PSA message through the actual game itself. Uh, next is the song or jingle where you compose a two to five minute original song um, on your PSA topic. Uh, this option requires lyrics to be included. Uh, and they're, they're more specific you can read on your own. Like you can use, you can get friends to play instruments. Um, you should be singing the song. Um, you should be writing the song um, and so on. Uh, the song, the only thing I can give as a piece of advice, I don't know if we have any people here who are interested in that option. By the way, if, if you want to, if you already think you, you know what format you're interested in, you can go ahead and type it in the chat. So that might be interesting for people to share what they think they'd like to do. Uh, okay, Doran says he's, uh, you're thinking about the song. Um, the main piece of advice I can give about the song is that it needs to be like, super literal like the song because songwriters often don't work so much in direct 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 language all the time right you begin with a feeling you begin with uh, abstract images you use metaphor you you're you're subtle the song or jingle public service announcement is like the exact opposite it needs to be pretty direct and a hundred percent literal so this isn't your time to like show off that you're this generation's bob dylan uh, or Leonard Cohen or wh whoever you admire as a, as a lyricist. Like, this is your time to be 110% literal. Um, and actually, this applies to all the projects, so I'm glad you brought that up, or I brought it up, actually. Uh, but no matter what form you use, your public service announcement should be able to pass what I call the stranger test. And by that, I mean I should be able to go out on the street and just grab someone, like accost someone, and hopefully not get ar ar arrested, uh, but I should be able to drag that person in, show them your PSA, or have them listen to it, and they should not be confused at all. Just like those print PSAs that we looked at, um, just like that billboard that we looked at, like there should be no confusion. Um, so that's like my number one piece of advice. And to get feedback, you might want to have friends or families look at your PSA uh, to get advice from them, or just look at your PSA when it's close to its finished form. Just look at it with a different set of eyes as if you're not yourself, as if you know nothing about this class or PSAs, and see if it sort of makes sense on its most basic level. Because that's an issue I see sometimes, uh, too. Okay? Like, real-world PSAs, like, I, I, I've seen a bunch lately on television about bullying. Um, although PSAs do have a specific audience they try to reach, those bullying ads, or excuse me, PSAs aren't obviously aimed at me, but they still make sense to me, right? So your PSAs do too. Yes, they're targeting a specific audience, but they should still make sense to just about anybody who's who's walking the street. Uh, okay, people have been sharing. Some people are going to do the comic. Uh, Rochelle says, stick figures for the comic. Okay, would you prefer actual drawing? Uh, stick figures are, are fine. Here Here's... Wow, so many good questions. Um, here's what I sort of expect from the public service announcement. I expect you to produce the best, most polished piece that you can. 
okay and there's actually a way to do stick figures with care oh gosh what was the name of that site it was like xkcd maybe is that it does anybody know the site i'm talking about that features stick figure cartoons